I think over time, more and more people are getting wealthy, not by um, providing something that would be winnable in the free market, but they do something by taking advantage of grants and credits offered by the government. I'll quote the Heritage Foundation here, the only rigorous empirical assessment of the NMTC to date found the program to be largely ineffective in meeting its goals of increasing community investment and development. The study found that most CDE investments were relocated investments rather than new net investments, in other words, um, transferring one business to another area. Um, suggesting that all NMTC investments do not likely represent new funds to low-income communities. Uh, President Trump tried to eliminate this in his 2021 budget, which showing that President Trump was sometimes uh, a president who was pushing for less spending. Uh, in his budget, they noted that the CDFI fund was created to jumpstart an industry at a time when CDFIs had limited access to private capital. The CDFI industry now has ready access to capital needed to extend credit and offer financial services to under, underserved community, eliminating the need for such grants. In the interest of ending cronyism, saving some tax dollars, stopping gun government waste, and uh, getting rid of a program that I think too frequently makes wealthy development types still wealthier. I urge a yes vote on this amendment. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. For what purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I claim time in opposition to the gentleman's amendment. The gentleman is recognized. I rise in opposition. Community development financial institutions stimulate economic growth and create and sustain employment opportunities in rural and low-income areas like a lot of America. The CDFI fund ensures CDFIs are able to provide these underserved communities access to capital by awarding certified CDFIs with tax credits and monetary support. I'm proud that my own state greatly benefits from the CDFI fund and have seen the far-reaching impact it's had on the community. Defunding the program would only serve to harm the most vulnerable communities in America. So it's under that pretense, Mr. Chairman, that I oppose the amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Wisconsin is recognized. I'll just make one more point here. Assuming some of this money uh, benefits Americans, not just the wealthy wheeler dealers, we right now, at least if Wisconsin is any indication, have huge surpluses uh, in our state coffers. If it's a good idea, it should be handled by the states, not by the federal government that is broke out of its mind. One of the reasons we're so broke is I think too many of my colleagues don't look at the Constitution and realize that some things are supposed to be handled by the state and local government, and other things are supposed to be handled by the federal government. By the time you drip the money down by the federal government, there's a huge amount of waste there. And in any event, in the interest of trying to keep our dollar, the, the strong currency it's been throughout our lifetime, I, I urge um, adoption of this amendment and send these programs back to the states. Does the gentleman reserve or you? I reserve the remainder of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gen gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. For, for the reasons stated previously, I urge rejection of the amendment. Yield back the balance of my time. Good afternoon, friends. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas day. So the Internal Revenue Service is expected to start sending out important letters to taxpayers next month. However, these letters will not be going out to everyone. Experts say it is important to review the letter and take action as quickly as possible. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to know about all of the details. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. And please make sure that you do stay tuned until the end of this video. I will be announcing the winners of yesterday's giveaway. After a two-year hiatus on automated collection notices, the Internal Revenue Service said it will soon resume sending such letters. According to CNBC News, 
In February 2022, the agency suspended automated collection notices to devote resources to its backlog of unprocessed correspondence and returns. But starting next month, notices will resume and the IRS will send a special reminder letter covering taxpayers' liability, ways to pay off the balance, and possibly penalty relief. However, the agency is waiving approximately $1 billion in late payment penalties for millions of taxpayers with balances under $100,000 from returns filed in 2020 and 2021. The relief is automatic. But late payment penalties for unpaid balances from 2020 and 2021 will resume on April 1, 2024. While late payment penalty relief may be welcome news for taxpayers with debt from 2020 or 2021, you will still need to pay off those balances. CNBC News has said that if you owe $50,000 or less, including tax, penalties, and interest, you can set up a long-term payment plan online with tax season approaching very soon. One of the biggest changes for 2024 is the expansion of home energy credits. This is due to the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. So if you took steps to make your home greener in 2023, you could be getting more money back, according to CNAT. Adding alternative energy to your home provides the biggest tax break, but some for improvements to oil or gas appliances, or even to structural items like insulation, windows, and doors, can also give you money back this tax season. The IRS allows two main tax credits for improving energy efficiency at home, the Energy Efficient Home Improvement Credit and the Residential Clean Energy Property Credit. The first credit deals with improvements to energy efficiency in your home, while the second focuses on alternative energy projects like solar panels or wind turbines. Formerly called the Non-Business Energy Property Credit, the Energy Efficient Home Improvement Credit now provides taxpayers 30% back for the installation of certain ENERGY STAR certified devices. There was previously a lifetime limit on the credit, but starting this tax year, On energy efficient home improvements, the Inflation Reduction Act changed the limit on the energy efficient home improvement credit to $1,200 annually. Water heaters and heat pumps have a completely separate credit limit of $2,000, so you can get back up to $3,200 back every year for major energy efficiency improvements. Many officials are also looking into the possibility of a recession occurring. While some economists believe the risks of a recession will remain, others think a soft landing is more likely. That scenario is understood as a combination of milder inflation alongside slow and steady employment growth. Today, the unemployment rate stands at 3.7%, little change from the 3.5% seen one year ago. The annual rate of inflation has fallen to 3.1%, less than half of the 7.1% rate seen in November 2022. The unemployment rate is up from the 3.4% low that was reached in April. And despite coming off the near double-digit highs in June 2022, inflation has not been able to break the 3% range. In fact, it has bounced around in that 3% range for six months. The economy has already slowed thanks to high interest rates, something that consumers will continue to encounter in 2024. The Federal Reserve has kept rates elevated in its ongoing effort to wrestle in inflation, and it isn't likely to reduce them anytime soon. Right now, credit card interest rates continue to average more than 20%. And even though mortgage rates are starting to decline, the average 30-year interest rate still hovers around 6.5% to 7% and even higher in certain faster-growing regions of our country. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, thank you, dearest friends.
for being part of this community. The winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway for Christmas Day is Sherry Doramus and Rick J. 098RB. Congratulations, my dearest friends. To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or dear friends, you could message me on my Facebook page. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.